infamous dictators of the 20th century, unveiling their atrocities. The 20th century was the most violent in history. While this century witnessed many great leaders such as Franklin D. Roosevelt, Dr. Martin Luther King, Winston Churchill, Mahatma Gandhi, and Nelson Mandela, it had more than its fair share of utterly evil leaders. Most of these evil leaders were infamous dictators of the 20th century. History is filled with examples of ruthless dictators who seized power, ruled with an iron fist, and held that power until the end. Here is our top 10 list of infamous dictators of the 20th century. Number 10, Joseph Mengele, 1911 to 1979. No list of 20th century evil leaders is complete without Joseph Mengele's, whose nickname, Todesengo, Angel of Death, says enough. He was the most prominent medical doctor at the Auschwitz death camp. Concentration camp seems too friendly a term. He selected victims to be killed in the gas chambers and happily administered the gas himself. That is bad enough. But what earned him his place in the top 10 of infamy is his experimentation on humans. Mengelau used Auschwitz as an opportunity to continue his research into genetics and heredity. He was fascinated by twins. The experiments he performed on twins included the amputation of limbs, intentionally infecting one twin with typhus or some other disease and transfusing the blood of that twin into the other. He experimented with changing the eye color, including injecting chemicals into the eyes of living subjects, and so on. Mengele has become the stereotype of the mad scientist for whom ethical boundaries were a nuisance and who would do anything to satisfy their lust for knowledge. Unfortunately, he was never captured. Number 9. Mengistu Haile Mariam, 1937 Mengistu Haile Mariam rose to power in 1977 as a member of the murderous Derg Regiment in Ethiopia, which had toppled and murdered Emperor Haile Selassie in 1974. His policies were to modernize Ethiopia's economy along Leninist, Stalinist, and Moist lines. Land, companies, banks, etc. were all nationalized. Farmers were compelled to join collectives. The free market was abolished. Not surprisingly, it was a disaster. People resisted, famine ensued, and economic destitution was widespread. This did not stop Mengistu. Widespread resistance was met with brutal force. Between 1.2 and 2 million people were killed during his regime. It was not uncommon to see students, suspected government critics, or rebel sympathizers hanging from lampposts each morning. Mengistu himself is alleged to have murdered opponents by garroting or shooting them, saying that he was leading by example. Yes, we need such examples. Human Rights Watch describes his regime as one of the most systematic uses of mass murder by a state ever witnessed in Africa. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, his position became untenable and he fled the country. Number 8. Idi Amin 1925 to 2003. Idi Amin ruled as dictator of Uganda after launching a military coup in 1971. His nickname is Butcher of Uganda. Amin's behavior steadily worsened during the 1970s. He expelled all Asians and handed over their businesses to his cronies, which led to the collapse of the economy. Yet, the Asians were lucky compared to his violent persecution of rival Ugandan tribes who were killed by tens of thousands. The total death toll for his regime amounted to half a million out of the population of 10 million. He was feared for feeding victims alive to crocodiles. He boasted that he kept the decapitated heads of political enemies in his freezer, although he said that human flesh was generally too salty for his taste. His megalomania knew no limits. Among his titles were Lord of all the beasts of the earth and fishes of the sea and conqueror of the British Empire in Africa. He was deposed in 1979 and fled to Saudi Arabia. He never expressed any remorse for his brutal deeds. He too was the subject of a Hollywood movie, The Last King of Scotland. Amin went into a coma caused by kidney failure in July 2003 and died in early August. His fifth wife by his side. News reports at the time blamed his weight, which may have ballooned to as high as 485 pounds, 220 kilograms by the time of his death. Number 7. Saddam Hussein, 
1937 to 2006. Saddam Hussein was president of Iraq from 1979 to 2003. The common thread in his life was his morbid thirst for power, absolute power, no matter how high the cost was in human blood. Born into the peasantry, Saddam rose to power through his leadership of the Ba'ath Party, which seized power in 1968 via a coup. Although he effectively held power from the start, he asserted his totalitarian authority during the late 1970s. The extensive use of a secret police force helped Saddam brutally retain his control over the country. Known for using terror against his people, Saddam Hussein's regime is believed to have caused the death of a quarter of a million Iraqis. His brutal rule also included a multitude of war crimes after he conducted unsuccessful wars against neighboring countries. Having learned nothing, he invaded Kuwait in 1990, leading the first Gulf War and leaving another 85,000 dead. Uprisings after the war led to the deaths of some 150,000 civilians. The list goes on until he was toppled in 2003 by American and Allied forces and hanged in 2006. Good riddance. Number 6. Kim Il-sung, 1912 to 1994. Kim Il-sung was the dictator of North Korea from 1949 until his death in 1994. The official name of North Korea is the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. All of it is a lie. There is nothing democratic about North Korea. The people are treated as slaves and is not a republic but a de facto kingdom with leadership going from father to son. Kim invaded South Korea in 1950, and in this war, some 3 million people perished, including 12 to 15 percent of North Korea's population. Subsequent Stalinist economic policies and widespread repression led to poverty, in which hundreds of thousands, if not millions, died. Sadly, the country has not improved much under his son and grandson, both of whom are utterly ruthless, evil, and leaders in their own right. What a family! Kim's regime created an insular North Korea that was almost unimaginably isolated from the outside world. Still, he could not hide his decline. By the late 1980s, a bony tumor on his neck was visible in official news broadcast, even as he tried to stand in such a way to hide the growth from the camera. It was a heart attack that ultimately did Kim in. However, the leader collapsed suddenly on July 8, 1994 and died several hours later he was 82. Number 5. Leopold II, 1835 to 1909. The Belgian king, Leopold II, was a nasty piece of work. He deserved inclusion in the list because of what happened in the Congo, which he acquired as private property in 1885 at the Berlin Conference, when much of Africa was divided among European powers. From the beginning, he was in it for the money, extracting the maximum amount of wealth from this huge colony. Millions of Congolese inhabitants, including children, were mutilated, killed, or died from disease during his rule. Failure to meet rubber collection quotas was punishable by death. Forced labor was instituted to increase population. Around 10 million people died during his brutal regime in the Congo. Not that he cared. Things got so bad in 1908, he was forced to hand over the colony to the Belgian state. Number 4. Pol Pot, 1925 to 1998. Pol Pot was the leader of the communist Khmer Rouge. He grabbed power in Cambodia in 1975 and set about creating a communist paradise on Earth. Not surprisingly, it was worse than Dante's seventh circle of hell. To fulfill his vision of an agricultural society, the urban population was forcibly relocated to the countryside to work on collective farms. Money was abolished, and all citizens were made to wear the same drab black clothing, which made Mayo costumes look fashionable. Intellectuals were summarily murdered. This included people who wore glasses. This experiment in social engineering cost the lives of about 25% of the population and was immortalized in the Hollywood movie Killing Fields. His evil government was toppled after four years by invading Vietnamese forces. Number three, Joseph Stalin, 1878 to 1953. In any list of evil men, Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin ranks high. He rose to power in the 1920s after the death of Lenin. A succession of five-year programs industrialized the country, but at unimaginable human cost. 
This, along with the forced collectivization of agriculture, led to widespread famine, which cost the lives of countless millions. Calculating Russian ruler Joseph Stalin's victim count is tough. Official records suggest at least three million people died from executions and in prison camps during his reign. But those numbers are likely incomplete, and millions more certainly died in famines caused by his policies. Modern historians peg the number of deaths at between 15 million and 20 million. Then came the Great Terror, involving purge after purge of almost all senior Red Army officers who were purged shortly before Hitler attacked, ensuring the dismal performance and the horrific losses in the early stages of World War II. In the early 1950s, he was planning another bloody terror, but thankfully, he died before he could unleash it upon the Herod nation. Number two, Mao Zedong, 1893 to 1976. Mao was a successful guerrilla fighter against the Japanese invaders and the corrupt Kuomintang government of General Lalissimo Chiang Kai-shek. In 1949, he had overcome them all, and the People's Republic of China was proclaimed. It went downhill ever since. In the purges of the early 1950s, millions of wealthy peasants, intellectuals, and saboteurs were killed. Then came the Great Leap Forward, 1958 to 1962. One of the most insane experiments in social engineering ever. Private plots were abolished and communal kitchens were introduced. It was a disaster. Production plummeted and the ensuing Great Chinese Famine cost the lives of up to 45 million people. Not having had enough, a few years later the dictator launched the Great Proletarian Cultural Revolution in 1966. Millions of people were persecuted and suffered public humiliation, arbitrary imprisonment, torture, hard labor, and execution. When Mao died in 1976, the country's per capita income was lower than Congo's, and China had lost over 55 million lives. Not that Mao cared. Purity above everything else, his purity. Number one, Adolf Hitler. Any list of evilness is invariably topped by German Chancellor and Führer Adolf Hitler, who came to power democratically in January 1933. His mad quest for revenge, conquest, and ethnic cleansing nearly succeeded. In December 1941, nearly all of Europe was under his heel. After Stalingrad, though the Third Reich lost battle after battle, and in May 1945, after Hitler committed suicide, Germany unconditionally surrendered. The country lay in ruins. Six million Jews were murdered, and World War II in total left some 55 million dead. Hate, racism, xenophobia, and maglomania are but a few words to describe this man. Six years and around 50 million deaths later, including six million Jews during the Holocaust, Hitler found himself holed up in a bunker in Berlin. The war had not gone Hitler's way, especially his disastrous attempt to conquer Russia during Operation Barbarossa, where his forces sustained catastrophic losses. On April 30, 1945, with Allied forces approaching Berlin from the west and east, Hitler shot himself in the bunker while his mistress, Eva Braun, consumed a cyanide capsule. A few days later, Berlin was liberated and the tyrannical reign of Hitler's Third Reich was officially over. William Pitt said, unlimited power corrupts the possessor. Do you agree? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you for joining us on this journey of exploration and discovery. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, Time Capsule, for fascinating content. Until next time, keep exploring.